What's up, Doodle Jump Gamers? Mr. Cully coming at you with another video. And today, what I'm going to be doing is recapping the lesson on position time graphs and using those position time graphs to create velocity time graphs. And it already sounds super nerdy, you're already asleep, I get it. But for those of you that want a refresher, that are struggling with this, I wanted to provide a video for you. So let's go ahead and jump in. Well, first of all, what's a position time graph? A position time graph is a position... It's a graph that shows you your position over time, essentially. So on the y-axis, you have your position, and that's a position that's arbitrary to uh, whatever point you set. So let's just make it a person who's away from home. Home is your origin. It's your, it's your starting location. It's your starting point, okay? And it's basically saying how far away are you from home. So, for example, at time equals zero, at time equals zero, our position from home is 10 meters, okay? That's what that is. At zero seconds, we are 10 meters from home. And let's go over here to four seconds. At four seconds, we are 20 meters from home, all right? And at nine seconds, we are five meters from home. So it's basically just lines and, and points that tell you, all right, this is where I am respect to a certain location. In our case, we're just going to say it's home. All right. So that's what this graph is telling us. It's 12 seconds and it's just telling us how far are we from our origin or a point away from home. All right. So based on this graph, we can infer a couple things. Well, what I want to do is I want to break this graph down by its different segments or legs. We can see that there's obviously some, something that's going on here that's different than what's going on here, that's different than what's going on here, and so on. There's like different sections of this graph. Well, let's look at this first section, this, this section between zero and two seconds, okay? That's a leg right there. That's a little segment. Well, between zero and two seconds, my position from home is 10 meters, so if my position from home is 10 meters between zero and two seconds, did I move anywhere? And the answer would be no. If your position stayed the same between zero and two seconds, you're basically being still, you're stopped, you're not moving. So number one says, describe the motion of the object from zero to two seconds. You are stopped, you're not moving, you're motionless, okay? You remain in the same position away from home for two seconds, okay? Well, what about two to five seconds? What's going on between two and five seconds? Well, we can see that this leg looks different. It's increasing. Well, what does that mean? Well, at two seconds, I'm 10 meters from home. At five seconds, I'm 25 meters from home. So I got further away from home. So we could say that we were moving away. We are moving away from home. That's terrible handwriting. Moving away from home at, at between two and five seconds. So you're moving away. And I'll go ahead and I'll write it down here as well as up there. Here you're stopped, because you're in the same place. Here you're moving away, all right? Well, up here, this looks a little different. We got another flat line again, between five and six seconds. Well, anytime you have a flat line on a position time graph, what you're saying is you're not moving. You're essentially in the same place between that, that segment of time. Between five and six seconds, my position did not change. It stays at 25. So what am I doing there? I'm stopped again. I'm stopped. My position has not changed over that amount of time. Okay. Well, what about between six and nine seconds? Well, here, this is different. The, the slope, instead of going up, is going down. Does that mean I'm going down a hill? No. Okay. This is not a picture. What it's saying is my position, my meters away from home is going down. Well, what does that mean? It means you're getting closer to home. So from point from six seconds to nine seconds, I'm actually going closer to home. So I'm moving back. Instead of moving away, I'm moving back towards home. So between six and nine seconds, you're moving backwards. Anytime you have a downhill slope, you're going back towards the origin. Okay, fair enough. And then between nine and 12 seconds, this leg looks a little different too. Well, what's going on there? Right there, between 9 and 12 seconds, the slope is still downward, and I'm still going towards zero. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm still getting closer to home. Well, how is that different than what we just had? Well, if you notice, the slope, the slope looks a little bit different. It's a little bit shallower. What does that mean? That means that I'm moving slower. So you're still moving backwards, but you're moving slowly backwards. Your speed, in a way, is slower. So you're moving slowly back.
just like that. So that is what this graph is showing. We are stopped, this flat line for two seconds. Then our distance away from home increases, we're moving away. Then we're stopped again. Then we're moving back towards home, that's why this is going down. And we're going back all the way back to home for this last leg, except we're moving a little bit slower because it's a shallower slope, okay? We're essentially going a, uh, a taking a longer amount of time to go a short distance. So that's what this is. So that's, that's what we're looking at here. That's how to dissect this graph, all right? Well, let's dive into it even more. What is the total distance traveled of this graph? All right, good question. How do we figure that out? Well, let's break this down leg by leg again. Between zero and two seconds, did I go a distance? No, I didn't. Remember, I, I, I was stopped here. So I was stopped, so that's zero meters, okay? If you're stopped, you're not moving anywhere. There's no distance that you're traveling there, okay? You start 10 meters away from home, and you ended 10 meters away from home over here on two seconds, so you didn't go anywhere. Your distance is zero. But what about between two and five? Well, between two and five, I do change position. I go from 10 to, looks like I go to 25. So I'm going from 10 meters away from home to 25 meters away from home. So what's the difference between those? Well, 25 minus 10 is 15. So between two and five seconds, I went 15 meters away from home. Okay, fair enough. Well, what about between five and six? Five and six seconds, again, it's a flat line. What does that mean? It means I'm stopped. I'm stopped, so did I go any distance at all? No, that's another zero meters. All right, fair enough. Well, between six and nine now, looking at that, between six and nine, I'm going from 25 meters away from home down to, it looks like five meters away from home. So if I go from 25 meters away to five meters away, what distance did I cover there? Well, it's 25 minus five, and that would be 20 meters, all right? And then lastly, between nine and 12 seconds, I'm going from five seconds, or sorry, five meters away from home to zero meters away from home. So that's a distance of five meters. So what I just did was I broke it down leg by leg of this graph, section by section, and I said, okay, how far am I going between each interval? And so if you add these all up, we had zero meters plus 15 plus zero plus 20 plus five. What you end up getting is 40 meters, okay? You add all those up, the total distance that you went or whatever person this went, whatever person we're talking about, went 40 meters, okay? So that's the total distance. Well, what about displacement? Displacement's different than distance. Remember, displacement's how far are you from where you started, okay? Displacement is not taking into account your total path. The other way to think about it, remember, displacement, if you're running around a 400 meter track and you started to end it in the same point, if you ran around that track, you want a total distance of 400 meters. But your displacement would be zero meters because you're back to where you started. Displacement is just saying, okay, where are you relative to where you started? So we started, we started at 10 meters away from home. So that's where we started. We started 10 meters away. Where did we end? We ended right here. That's zero meters away from home. Okay. So if I started 10 meters away and I ended zero meters away, I ended at home. What's my displacement? Your displacement is 10 meters because you basically started 10 meters away, ended zero meters away. You subtract those, you get a displacement of 10 meters away from home, all right? Now, I do want to add that displacement can be a negative number. If you started 10 meters away and you ended zero, you technically went backwards. You went back 10 meters. Instead of going forward 10 meters away from home, you went back to home. So anytime you go backwards, what we actually do with displacement is we put a negative sign. So a negative sign in physics indicates direction. It just means that you're going backwards in a sense, all right? Positive is forwards. You don't always draw the positive symbol, but backwards to signify that, you just put a negative. So technically displacement here is we are back 10 meters from where we started. We are backwards 10 meters.
Okay, that's all that the negative means. All right, what is the average speed of the object? Ooh, that's a good question, okay? We're actually not gonna do number five, skip that. What is the average speed of the object? Well, we know that the equation for speed is distance divided by time, okay? Well, we're looking at the average speed for the whole trip, all right? What distance did we go? Well, based on the previous problems, we found our distance to be 40 meters. We went 40 meters total in this trip. Over how much time? Well, this whole trip went from zero to 12 seconds. So it took us 12 seconds this whole trip. So if you do 40 divided by 12, what you end up getting is 3.3. All right, so our speed's 3.3. 3.3 what? Is it miles per hour? Is it kilometers per second? Like, what is it? Well, you have to look at your units. Here, it's meters on top, and below, it's seconds. So this is going to be 3.3 meters per second. And the way that we abbreviate that is just m slash s, meters per second. All right, so our average speed throughout that whole trip was 3.3 meters per second. This is kind of realistic. So if you think about like if you're if, if you're driving, which I don't know if you are, if you're driving, you're kind of stopped and then you go and then you stop and then you come back and then you come back to home. Your average speed is going to be a total of what was your speed? What was your speedometer on average throughout that whole trip? Sometimes it's zero because you're stopped. Sometimes it's 80 because, you know, you're speeding. No, don't do that. But your average is going to be somewhere in the middle of all those. In this case, we got it to be 3.3. All right. All right, this is the tricky part. So this is introducing something new. On the bottom, we were looking at a position time graph. All right, it's basically telling us what is our position at any moment in time over that 12 seconds. A velocity time graph tells us the velocity at any point in time along that journey. So we're going to use this position time graph to make a velocity time graph. We're essentially going to take the velocities of each of these segments and graph them up here. And it sounds confusing right now, but let's break it part by part. But first, let's explain what velocity is. Velocity is like speed. They're very, very similar. Speed, though, is never negative. If you are in a car, you're not going to see a negative speed. It's always going to be, it's, it's either be zero or above zero. Okay. Even if you're in reverse, it's going to be positive. But the difference with the velocity is velocity must include direction. So if you're going backwards, velocity would be negative. So that's the only difference. You got to take into account direction with velocity. So velocity could be a negative number. It's just your speed that's negative. Okay. So let's break this down. Let's look down here at our position time graph. And let's look at our first segment between zero and two. Looking at that. We want to find the velocity between zero and two, AKA the speed with direction. Well, what do we say was going on between zero and two? Well, between zero and two, we said we were stopped. We're in the same position for those two seconds. So what's our velocity? What's our speed? Well, if we're stopped, we're not moving. Our speed is zero. So looking at our velocity time graph, on the Y axis, we have our speed, our velocity. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on over time. So between 0 and 2, we would have a velocity of 0. So that's why it's going to be on the axis here, 0. That's our speed between 0 and 2 seconds. We just graphed what our speed was. That's all we just did. We said we were stopped between 0 and 2 seconds. We were going 0 meters per second. So up here, we're graphing what our speed was, our velocity. Between two and five seconds, though, between two and five seconds, though, we are moving. We do have some sort of speed. Well, we need to calculate what that speed is. Well, how do we calculate speed? Speed is distance divided by time. Well, between two and five seconds, what distance did I go? I went from 10 meters away to 25 meters away. Well, from going from 10 to 25, that's a total distance of 15 meters. How many seconds did it take me to go that 15 meters? If I'm going from two to five, that's two, three, four, that's three seconds. So I went three seconds, 15 meters in three seconds. 
Okay, now I just need to do the math. What's 15 divided by three? Your speed's gonna be five. And what's my unit? Meters per second. So between two and five seconds, I was going a speed of five meters per second. Well, that's our speed, what's our velocity? Remember, velocity is just your speed with a sign. Is it positive or negative? Well, what's going on here? Am I going away or am I going back? I'm going away because I'm getting further away from my starting point. So it's going to be positive. So my speed ends up being my velocity. Okay. So now we got to graph it. Between two and five seconds on this graph, I'm going a velocity of five meters per second. And so what I typically do is since it looks kind of weird going straight from zero to five like this, I just draw a dashed line. You don't have to, but we just signify that with a dashed line, kind of like that. All right, let's do the next part of the graph. Here, between five and six seconds, I'm stopped again. Well, what's my velocity if I'm stopped? Zero. If you're stopped, you're not moving at all. So between five and six seconds again, this is going to be a flat line. I have a velocity of zero. Okay, well, that's easy. Let's do the next leg. So this next leg between six and nine seconds, I need to find the speed again. So I got to go through and I got to do all the calculations. My speed is going to be my distance traveled divided by time. Well, I started 25 meters away. I started 25 meters away. And at nine seconds, I'm five meters away. So if I started 25 and I came back to five, what distance did I travel? 25 minus five, that's 20 meters. How long did it take me from six to nine seconds? That is three seconds. So now I gotta do the math. 20 divided by three is going to be 6.7 meters per second. All right, so my speed during that leg of the journey was 6.7 meters per second. What about my velocity? Is my speed equal to my velocity here? Well. I gotta take into account what direction I'm going. Am I going forward or backward? Well, since this is coming back to home, I'm going backwards. So I need to make this speed negative. And so that means my velocity is negative 6.7 meters per second. So between six and nine seconds, I'm going 6.7 meters per second backwards or negative 6.7 meters per second. So I'm gonna graph that. Where is negative 6.7 on this graph? right between here okay so between six and nine seconds my leg is going to look like this all right and then lastly lastly i've got one leg left <clears throat> and what we're doing there is we're going to calculate speed again well, I'm going from, in this leg, I'm going from five meters away to zero meters away. So my total distance was five meters. Divided by the time it took me. Well, nine to 12 seconds, that's three seconds again. Okay. So now I just do the math. What's five divided by three? You're gonna get one, oops, 1 1.67 meters per second. And again, I gotta ask myself, that's my speed, but what's my velocity? Is it gonna be positive or negative? Well, I'm going backwards still. I'm going backwards, but I'm going backwards at 1.67 meters per second, so it's gonna be negative 1.67 meters per second, since I'm going back towards home. So now, up on this graph between nine and 12 seconds, I need to graph negative 1.67 meters per second for that time span. So where is that on this graph? Negative 1.67 will fit in right about there. So between nine and 12 seconds, that's gonna be my velocity. So let's fill this in. Let's kind of let's kind of look at our graphs again. Let's compare this for a second. Here between zero and two seconds, let's recap. Between zero and two seconds, I was stopped. That's zero meters per second. 
So up on this graph, what I did was between zero and two seconds, I graphed my velocity to be zero. That's why it's a flat line here at zero. Between two and five seconds, I found my velocity to be five meters per second. So at two seconds, it jumped up to five meters per second and it stayed there between two and five seconds. Because down on this graph, I found that between two and five seconds, I was going five meters per second. And then between five and six seconds, I was stopped, okay? Which means my velocity went back down to zero. So that's why here it flatlined again at zero. Between five and six seconds, I was going zero meters per second. Then between six and nine seconds, we found our velocity to be negative 6.7 meters per second, which is why it jumped down to a negative velocity, negative 6.7 meters per second. And then here, we found velocity to be negative 1.67 meters per second. So that's why it moved up to here. I essentially went slower, okay? So this position time graph tells me my position at any time. This velocity time graph tells me my velocity at any time. So if I wanted to know how fast I was going at four seconds, I could look at my velocity time graph now and I could say, oh, I was going five meters per second. Or if I wanted to know at eight seconds, I would look at my velocity time graph and I'd say, oh, I was going negative six, negative seven meters per second. Okay, so that's how these graphs correlate. You can take your position time graph, find the speeds, find the velocities, and then graph it on a velocity time graph. Super, super tricky, but once you kind of break it down leg by leg, then it starts to make sense, and then you, it, it's, it's a lot easier to do than all at one time, okay? So that was today's lesson. Let me know if you have any questions, and uh, good luck on your homework.